16. You got it? Look at verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. And we want to focus in on verse 15, go into all the world. Look at your neighbor before you're seated, maybe two of them, and say, it's time for world invasion. Amen. Well, you just did the second person an injustice because I heard you kind of whisper it to them. You're supposed to tell them all, it's time for world invasion. Amen. We began sharing this with you uh, a few weeks ago about world invasion, and this would be part three for those who love to take notes. But it is, it is every, we got to understand that every believer, say every believer, every. has been called and equipped to invade the kingdoms of this world, and the purpose of it is for transformation. You cannot transform something if you are not being transformed. I'll say that one more again. You cannot transform anything if you're not being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means you're going to be in a process that the Spirit of God is developing you, and you can't bail out the process. Amen. Everybody say, he's taking you somewhere. At least tell that to your neighbor. He's taking you somewhere. Go over to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I want to read another verse of scripture to you because this is time, this is the time for world invasion. We told you that there are several worlds and when the Lord said go into all the world and preach the gospel, he wasn't just talking about go around the globe and preach the gospel. We've been kind of stuck on that. Um, uh, we have to do that, but that's not all there is to it. And so we got to develop a kingdom mindset. If we don't develop a kingdom mindset, we will X out what the Lord is interested in, and it's called nations. We will not think about transforming nations. To transform nations, you transform cities. And all of us live in a city or a town, and the Lord will always start you where you are. It is no coincidence that you live where you live. You have a role to play. You've got a part to play. Your part is very key. That's why the enemy will work feverishly to lure you into a place where your life is not effective for the kingdom of God and very effective for the kingdom of darkness. Because if the kingdom of darkness can, can continue to rule over neighborhoods and communities and cities, then somebody or some people's lives are going to be damaged severely. And people will die and leave this earth and go to hell, never receiving Christ's redemptive work that he's already did, already paid for with his shed blood. And so it's imperative that the church, that all of us, we wake up. And the things that have been uh, uh, real important, you know, uh, various issues that, that we hold on to, various schisms and isms and divisive things that we tend to hold on to and protect our religious ideologies and thinking and twisted views and all this, we got to drop that stuff and begin to see God's bigger picture. Amen. Amen. I don't care if we're red yellow, black, white, brown, 
And if polka dot is in there, polka dot. I'm serious. We like to talk about, oh, it's just wonderful. You know, you come in a congregation there, and there's, it's a mixed congregation. You got Orientals, you got white, you got black, you got Hispanic, and, and, all, and it's like, oh, it's a picture of heaven. This is kind of what it's going to be like, oh, when we get to heaven. Oh, I can't wait till we get to heaven where we see what it's going to be like. Well, if this is a picture, then how come we ain't acting like heaven? Amen. 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 I don't like him because he's white. I don't like her because she's black. Well, I certainly don't like her because she's Oriental. But we love the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, that's a lie. Yeah, because the Lord said, how, how can you say, are y'all here? How can you say you love me? You've never looked in my face. And you don't, you see somebody every day when you got issues with them. That is not the love of God. The love of God has no strings attached to it. And so there are a lot of little, I call them little, uh, from God's perspective they're little, but they have big devastating effects. A lot of things that are holding the church in bondage and the enemy is glad about it and he's going to try to reinforce it because that makes us non-effective. When we don't think kingdom, we start protecting our little shop and we start trying to promote us. Yeah, it's this church right here. See, we ain't interested in nobody else's church. We just interested in ours, the vision that God has given to us. And I want to, oh, I want to play. I want to have a great big place so we can, we can, we can be large and people know who we are. Oh, they got all kind of ministry coming out. They got all kind of ministers. Oh, they can preach. They can sing. Oh, they can turn things over. And you know what happens? All of that is good here in the earth. And it has no eternal value. Because we, what we did was not uh, in line with the big picture. The big picture is about taking whole cities and transforming them where it's that whole city becomes a light lit up with the glory of God. Amen. Luke chapter 19. Look at verse, well, look at verse 9. Let's pick up there. Well, verse 8. Then Zacchaeus, y'all know about Zacchaeus, a little short man, who uh, uh, he was a chief tax collector. That means he was not liked to the 10th degree. <laughs> yeah, he was a chief tax collector. The, the religious folks didn't like him, and everyday people didn't like him. Come on, you don't fall in love with the tax person. You get a letter from, from the tax place, you, you don't say, well, praise the Lord. You'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord, you know. Tell your neighbors, take that old spiritual hat off your head. <laughs> then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Now, don't nobody like it. And the Lord, he, got, he climbs up into a tree so he can see the Lord. The Lord's coming, coming down the street. You know, there's a big parade. Everybody gathered around him. You know, all the local big shot pastors. You know, everybody got a ministry. You know, everybody that's, 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 that's you know, whoever. Everybody that's somebody in town. They're in the, they, they, they traveling along with the Lord. So it'll be known that I'm with him. Even the haters are traveling. And then Zac Zacchaeus, he's short, so he's trying to figure out which way they're going. He, he wants to get a look at him. So he climbs up in the tree. The Lord comes by there and looks up at him and says, Hey, Zach, I got to come to your house today. Messed everybody up. What you going to do? Y'all know how we do. See, the Lord will always allow something to flush out what you're harboring. Uh huh. If you got, a, you got an issue with somebody white, the Lord will put you in a situation where your issue will come out. 
You got an issue with somebody black, somebody Hispanic, somebody Oriental, he's going to put you in a situation where that's going to come out. Now you got to deal with it. Because as long as we're harboring it, we deny it. Oh, no, I love everybody. No, you don't. Come on now. You got people that look just alike, same skin color, that don't like each other. And they go to church. You got some that hickey bow and some that show tie and all of that. Some roll on the floor, some be stiff, but they don't like each other. You can't move forward with that. So they got an issue with Zacharias. This ain't my message. Zacchaeus, not Zacharias. They got an issue with him. And then he gets up and say, Lord, I'm going to give half of my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything, you know you took something. Well, what he's saying is, what I've taken falsely, I restore for a foe. And look at what the Lord said. Said to him, he said to everybody, he said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. Wait a minute. Everybody else trying to kill him. He's in the presence of the Lord and the Lord is saying, now look, you need to do this, you need to do that. He knew what he needed to do and he made his adjustment. He repented and then I'm going to restore and the Lord says, salvation has come to your house. What belongs here is now on this house. You don't have to steal now. The blessing is on your house. Because you got all this stuff illegally. Most of it anyway. Because he is also a son of Abraham. Here's my point, part of my point. We got to stop throwing folks away. Uh, I, I can't go to the left or the right because right I heard equal mm -hmm, from both sides. We cannot continue to throw people away. And think we're going to take the city. We act like the Lord has put all his eggs in our basket. Our basket cannot hold all of his eggs. Keep reading. Today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, it's, this is interesting because he didn't say he came to seek and to save those who are lost. He said that. So what is that? What's been lost? See, we think we read it, but we interpret those who are lost. Okay? We go and get, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And, and those in the, we think those in the world, people that are not saved, we get them saved. Right. Now that they're saved, what do they do? Where do we go from there? If we don't know God's big picture, then we become religious. We go to church, and we do church stuff. And if that's all we do, we become like the Pharisees. They were at church, let me, you know, in, in the temple. The Lord comes in the temple. Here's a man with a withered hand that comes to church every Sunday. And they watch, they're watching the Lord to see if he's going to do some miracle and violate the Sabbath. They were holding on to the traditions. They adhered to that more than the word of God. And the Lord looked around at them. He knew what he knew they were hating on him. He got a serious reputation going. The Lord does. I mean, power from, from the world to come is manifesting everywhere he goes. So he tells the man, come stand up here in front of everybody. He says, he looks around and says, is it, is it right to do good or evil on the Sabbath? And the Bible said they wouldn't say nothing. Now, they there. They're waiting on an opportunity, but he shut them up. He said, stretch out your hair. And as soon as the man's hand became normal, they didn't say, well, hallelujah, glory to God. The Bible said they got together with some Herodians 
some folks that embrace what Herod believes. Twisted, crazy, two-faced. Because see, Herod then was, they had a Jewish background. You know what to do, but you like the world better. They got with them. Now they want to kill it. There was a lot more people in church that day. And you know what the Lord did? The Bible say he got his disciples and left and went to the sea. How could you heal the rest of them folks? There was some other folks need to be healed. He just healed the one guy. Because those leaders were not interested in the well-being of the people. They were trying to come against him. They were just simply religious, having church. And in doing so, you grieve the Spirit of God. What does he do? Get up and leave. And we're talking about invading, world invasion. There are some things we got to get right so we can invade. Because here's what things are, folks. Either the church will invade the worlds and transform it by the power of Almighty God, or you're going to get invaded. There ain't nobody sitting on the fence on this one. Tell your neighbor, say, you either in or out. You think you're going to wait till somebody else hit theirs. God blesses them, and then you're going to ride on what they got. Mm-hmm. Nope. This ain't time to be scared. This show ain't my message. Mm. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? Really, it refers back uh, having everything to do with what Adam lost. Adam lost a whole lot. We only thought he just, he bit the apple and uh, now he's spiritually dead. And, but that took a whole lot of things away. And so if we only think Adam, what happened to Adam was small, then when the Lord Jesus shows up, we think what he did was small. We don't see the magnitude of it. Therefore, we have no appreciation really for what he's done. We push him into a category that those who are just religious and full of religion have put him in. Oh, yes, he was a great prophet. But that's all he was. That means it was a whole lot of prophets since, since way back in antiquity. There's a whole, been a whole lot of prophets. They're mouthpieces. So if that's all he was, then he's in the category of everybody else. He's not Lord. If he's not Lord, then the worship does not go to him. If worship doesn't go to him, where does it go? So when the body of Christ understands who he is and the magnet, am I, here, am I making sense? The magnitude of what he has accomplished, what he has done for us, he did it all. We couldn't do nothing. Not one iota. We couldn't do nothing. We couldn't lift a finger. We were cut off. And if you're not Jewish, we had no hope. We were without a redeemer. We were without a Messiah. We had no hope. So he did it all and then brought us in, engrafted us in. So what the Lord, one of the things he wants to do with us, I want y'all to hear me. He wants to strip being religious out of us because just being being religious even the word religion comes from the Latin it means to return to bondage So we can hang on to some old views and things like that, and it puts you in bondage. The enemy loves it because he didn't have to do it. There's nothing worse than self-medicating yourself with the wrong medication. Oh, I know what to do. I know what to do. 
Now they got to rush you to the emergency room and pump you. Oh. Okay. Go to verse 11. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Kind of sound like us. We think everything's going to happen immediately. If I expect everything to happen immediately, then if it goes past my expected time, there's no more exercise of patience. The exercise of patience is part of your warfare. Because if I don't exercise patience, yes, sir. Go to Ephesians. We're going to come back here. Go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Y'all know where Ephesians is? Ephesians is a book that is about you. It's about the church. It's actually written outside the dimensions of time. Talking to you about who you are. Look at verse 10, Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren and sistren, and when we read that, we think, okay, this is the, this is the last thing he's going to talk about. In other words, what he's saying is, now, the last and the most important thing, all the stuff that I've said from Ephesians 1 all the way up to this point, this is the last, but it's the most important. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. The armor of God, the devil and his bunch have seen it because they encountered Christ when he made a public spectacle of, of them. They saw the whole armor of God. Keep in mind, when you become impatient, you'll start removing these things. And he didn't say put it on every day. Y'all know, <laughs> Pastor Naomi, y'all, you, 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 a prophet is one. Y'all, y'all remember there was a time when folks they get up and they kind of go through the. You remember Pastor Sean? They go through the ritual. I put on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness. I put on the the the. I gird about my loins with truth and put on. You know they. And so we go through this putting it on. And I get up tomorrow morning, I put it on. And the question always came to me, well, when did you take it off? <laughs> so it's like when you get ready to go to bed, you take all this stuff off like you take your clothes off. Yeah. So you slept naked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't have no armor on. The enemy launches attacks while you, you, you asleep. I'm not making light of that, but it's like if we become religious in that, we're just doing stuff. Ooh. I feel good. Reverend Fred, I feel good because I put on the whole arm of God. First thing he said was, be, y'all got it? Be strong and in the why didn't he just start out saying put on the whole armor of God? He got to tell you to be strong because I'm telling you in a second, it's something about the armor that if you ain't strong, you just standing in it. You can't go to war because you can't handle it. It's not your armor. You don't get this armor down at the 10 cent store. You don't go to, you know, God bless Sam Walton and Walmart, but you don't go to Walmart and get this one. You might get some books written about it, but you don't pick this up and stick it in your grocery cart. Put on the whole armor of God or put on the armor that makes you look like God. That you may be able to stand. Uh-oh. So it means, it, it refers to, if you don't, you won't be able to stand. Remember I told you, it, it, it ain't no sitting on the fence. 
This is not going to be a spectator sport. You either fighting, kind of like this movie that uh, about uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh, they, they showed that when, when, when the uh, Japanese began to attack, it caught the men off guard. Some of them, was, you know, still had their, their underwear on. They just knew they had been sleeping during the day. They were sleeping. I don't know if they had night shifts or whatever, but a whole bunch of them were sleeping. And they started dropping bombs and torpedoes and, and, and shooting uh, bullets from the planes at them. You know, and some of them, there was a group of them, they, they ducked all, all the way over here hiding. And one of the officers said, get up and fight. Get up and fight. They're trying to hide. You've been trained for fighting. Now the fight is here. You're trying to hide. I know you were blessed by that one. There's more coming. And so we want you to stay tuned for this entire series about world invasion. There's so much wisdom, so much insight, and revelation knowledge that the Spirit of God is pouring out. And I want you to get in on all of it because there's no accident that you were born when you were born. Did you notice that the Lord didn't have you born in the 1800s or the 1700s, you know, when those guys wore those uh, curly wigs and things like that? You wouldn't have made it because there's something in you that's engineered for this hour. Stay tuned for more, and we know your life will change dramatically. Before we leave, let me pray for you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody listening to the sound of my voice and watching this broadcast, that their hearts will be turned toward you where they will begin to realize that they are a world invader, not in their own strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cause your grace to be multiplied to each one and cause them to discover their place on the mountain they are assigned to by the Spirit of God and make their life most effective. All to your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And I believe this is going to happen. Amen. Listen, stay tuned for more of the Heart of a Servant. And we know that world invasion is coming your way. Thank you for joining us for the Heart of a Servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, We'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant.